Do you need a solution for potato chips in your diet? I dare you to eat just one. Seasoned dehydrated zucchini chips, the best thing ever. Let me show you how. Hi folks, it's Darcy from the Purposeful Pantry and today I'm gonna to show you how to dehydrate zucchini with seasonings that you're gonna love and have a replacement for potato chips. Let's get started. Okay, as with all uh, fruits and vegetables, wash them first thoroughly. Then I go ahead and peel uh, a couple of these because uh, we'd like it both ways, peeled or not. We know that most a good part of the nutrition is left in the peel, so you might want to keep them on there for the skin. Then I'm setting up my dash chopper uh, to go to the lowest setting, which is number one. Uh, it gives you about an eighth of an inch uh, slice. So um, you want these, if you're going to do potato chip replacement, you want these as thin as you can get them while still holding some shape. So uh, these are about a quarter, I mean an eighth of an inch thick at this point. So let's get going with all of them. Okay, this was just about vegetable chips, but because I've got way more chips than we're gonna be able to eat before they're all, uh, before they're done, because I don't think that the chips keep super long. You can always throw them back on the dehydrator if you find they start getting a little soft or over time they're not as crunchy as you want, throw them back in the dehydrator. But I still have way more chips than we're gonna eat in the next few weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my extra zucchini. I'm just gonna go ahead and shred them. Okay, I'm gonna get these ready for another meal down the road, but I can you can watch how I dehydrate shredded zucchini. And for those of you who know my uh, my insistence that if you're going to use a mandolin, uh, buy a cutting glove that's safe. It works for doing grating too, so that you don't cut your fingers. You know, have you ever had that grated on your thumb after you've been trying to uh, grate something down to the nub? This will save you. Okay, so we're just going to go. And I do uh, shred zucchini um, peeled and not peel. Uh, I do it both ways. Okay, how much is this? That was one, two, three, four zucchini. And I know this is liquid measurement, but it's easier than trying to do it all in cups. So if we take just a straight uh, measurement without trying to uh, get rid of the water, we're looking at about probably five cups of shredded zucchini. Now, when you have recipes, they're either gonna call for just shredded zucchini and they're gonna let you keep that moisture. Some may ask you to go ahead and, and uh, squeeze out the excess liquid. It just depends on the recipe, so always try to make sure of that. So we've got approximately five cups of shredded zucchini, which will come out to about, uh, one, two, three, cup and a half dried. What I've got here is about two and a half cups of shredded zucchini on a tray. I did not use a fruit leather sheet. I used some of the more dense um, mesh that I have. Um, it's fine either way, whatever you want to use. What I wanted to tell you about is that zucchini shreds will shrink up incredibly. Um, they will get really small. And while you don't want to worry about um, overpacking trays, um, you do have a thing where it gets too thick and it just can't dry. But what I'm gonna do is every couple of hours after they've had a chance to start really drying, I'm gonna walk through and pull them out of the machine. I'm gonna stir them up so that there are no areas where if it gets a little thick and it can't get through here and dry well, um, I can make sure that things are getting moved around uh, and shuffled around and done. Now I wouldn't do this with berries and I wouldn't do this with other foods that really, really need some good circulation to get a good efficient dry, but because these shrink so much and coming through here and um, shuffling them around. All okay, so for our first tray of zucchini chips, I'm gonna try something a little different that I haven't tried before. I'm actually gonna use some barbecue sauce and just brush it on and see how they come out. Typically, you would use a powder to put on top, um, but you know, we're gonna try something different and we're using Rudy's barbecue sauce, which is, uh, fun stories from this. I grew up right down the street from where Rudy started. It is a regional barbecue joint that started out as a small gas station. Uh, well, it was, a, it was the only gas station for miles in Leon Springs, Texas. Um, that's where my grandparents lived for most of my life and I would spend summers there and we always went for Christmas and Thanksgiving. 
Um, and that's where my, my grandfather met his best friend, George Strait. And um, I don't know if you're a country fan, George Strait's a huge country name. Uh, and um, grandpa used to do walks every morning to go down and uh, he would collect aluminum cans on the road uh, and turn them in every year. And that's how they would save up their vacation money. Um, and then, uh, thank you, Alexa. Um, that must be weather advisory for bad weather day, uh, probably air quality in our house. So grandpa would go and walk and then he would go down to Rudy's and get some coffee in the mornings. And one, uh, one day while he was there, George and his friends had been out doing a motorcycle ride because they rode the back roads of, uh, of Central Texas in the hill country back there. He lived there in the area. And so they stopped to have coffee at Rudy's too. And then grandpa talked to him a little bit. And then over, he ran into him, I think one or two more times and always told a story as if George was his best friend and that's where he met there. So it was just always a fun story for me to remember him by. Um, but Rudy's is a great barbecue spot. Um, they're located in Texas and, uh, and I think like in Tennessee and Oklahoma, some of the other states down here. Um, but I grew up on this barbecue and loved it back when I could still eat barbecue. All right. So what I've done is I have just spread a little barbecue sauce on these zucchini chips. And this is a little spicy. It's not, it's not super hot barbecue sauce, but it's, but it is a little spicier than typical barbecue sauce. They have regular barbecue sauce and they have sissy sauce for those who don't like the heat. All right. So we're going with that. And there's our first tray down. Okay, for our next concoction for chips, we're gonna make a pizza topping chip. Okay, so what basically what we're doing is making, um, I don't know if you've ever seen eggplant parmesan and then people do it eggplant, then some taco sauce, I meant some uh, tomato sauce, some pasta sauce, whatever you wanna call it, and then some shredded parmesan on top. So I thought I would try a different version for the zucchini chips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm making up this concoction um, as we go. Uh, I will leave the um, the full uh, recipe for it down in the description box below. There's going to be one to the best uh, seasoning mix for veggie for veggie chips. I will add that to it. All right, then we're going to add quite a bit of tomato paste that's made into a powder. So we're going to add I don't know two a tablespoon and a half tomato powder, which is made from ground up tomatoes, uh, made into a paste, and then dry the paste. And there there you go. Then we're gonna add a little celery powder for um, the saltiness and just for a different flavor than just a little salt. A little on there, about an eighth of a teaspoon. Then add some garlic powder, cause you know your pizza stuff has to be a bit garlicky. Add as much as you want. Some onion powder, I'm gonna grind some more up, I'm almost out, onion powder. Then some regular, Italian herbs because I don't have a good, um, I just have this pre-blend that we're still trying to use up. So a bunch of that, then some pepper, as much as you like. All right, anything else? If you really like this taste of salt, you might want to put some salt in here, but we're gonna go with it just like this. Oh, and what I am gonna do, no, I'm not gonna do it until after we're done here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this ground. This is pizza topping. Okay, that's still gonna, woo, here we go. There we go. Can you see it now? That's pizza topping. And because for drying, especially if you're gonna store it, I don't like using real dairy, so I'm gonna use some can parmesan you don't have to use this you can use regular and you can just throw it all over the kitchen like I do <laughs> so I use quite a bit because I'm gonna like that taste in it then we're gonna add about half that powder mix it up a lot put some 
some chips in there. You can do this. All right, so I've got chips that are really good and covered. So if you like that, there you go. Man, it smells like pizza. So the last ones I have here, I'm just gonna sprinkle some on. Um, something that I do find is that because zucchini um, can be temperamental about the moisture, uh, sometimes stuff will stick to it really well and then sometimes it doesn't. So you can do this in a bag or shake it just on top like this. Either way works, just work whatever is best for you. Now these might have a little bit much on there, but my pizza loving kid is probably gonna love that. He likes the big bowl flavors. And if you think that you're going to like a little less flavor, then put a little less on. Okay, for this next uh, set, we're going to use this tequila lime seasoning mix that I got from Whole Foods a while back. Um, my, my guys really like tahini seasoning, so I thought this might be a good different kind of flavor for them. So we're going to take a little bit of it for the zucchini chips. I'm just going to sprinkle it on. So something to know about doing chips with spices. Uh, once you dehydrate this, those spices can get really concentrated. And for some of you, you may love that because you like the extra seasoning. For some of you, you may hate it because you may just get way too much sauce, especially if it's something like I mean, way too much seasoning, especially if it's kind of spicy. So what you're going to want to do your first go around, just do a little bit and then add more as you go. Uh, the next time you know that you can add a little bit more. Or if you found that you add a little too much, then you know the next time just know, make notes of it, uh, that you just need to add a little less seasoning depending on what the seasoning is. Now I could go back and do this in the, the baggie just like I did the first one I meant when I did the pizza sauce, but I decided that I'm just gonna do it this way. I don't really wanna waste any of the extra powder. And this is probably gonna be pretty salty, so be forewarned. Okay, so on this last tray, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of do a couple of them. I'm gonna do a little, uh, this is sour cream and onion that I think I'm pretty sure I got from a Mennonite store that's near where my grandparents, I mean, my in-laws live in Kentucky. So we're gonna do a little sour cream and onion on here. For this last one, we're going to use a little taco seasoning mix. Okay, to dry, we're going to go ahead and get this set at 135 um, while our vegetables tend to be 125F, 52C. Um, it, we are wanting these chips to be a little crispier, so we're gonna dry them a little faster because we want the crisp. And I understand that it means I'm gonna lose a little more vitamin A and C out of the zucchini shreds, but I'm okay with that for right now because this is our focus. This was the extra. This is gonna go into the bulk of all the rest of what I have. It's gonna be okay. So let's get started. This should take anywhere from four to eight to 10 hours, depending on your machine, your humidity, how much liquid, how much moisture is in your zucchini, etc. All right, here we go. About eight hours later, we have pizza chips. We, you know, sampled. We have, these are the taco seasoning, I think. These are the barbecue. These are the, oh no, this is taco seasoning and sour cream and onion. This is the tequila lime. 
Then we have our zucchini shreds. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is pull these out, allow them to come to room temperature, and then we're gonna test and store. Okay, the important part about doing zucchini chips is that you let them cool off before you test them because um, while they're warm, they still may be pliable and not quite crisp, and you want a good crisp chip, okay? Barbecue sauce, thumbs up. We've tested them, we like the barbecue. Because this barbecue sauce happens to have a little kick, the kick doesn't kick in till the very end, so you've eaten this chip and you go, oh, it's okay. And then all of a sudden there's this little pop of, of, um, of kick to it. And that was good. I would have put a little bit more barbecue sauce on these the next time I do them, because this was the first time I tried the liquid. I'll put a little bit more on. Okay. To store these, here's what I'm going to do. I have these little silicone zipper top bags and for storage for long-term, these are not okay for quick, you know, we're only going to have these for a week, not even that long. These are probably going to be gone over the weekend. Um, all I'm going to do is go ahead and put these in. These are silicone versus plastic, so they're going to have be a little more airtight than just a, pl a regular plastic bag. And then we're just going to store them in like this, okay? This is not the perfect medium, but this is going to be good enough for what we're doing this for, okay? Just set these here. This is the chili lime. Uh, no, the tequila lime, my least favorite of all the ones in here. And it's not because it's not good, it's just my least favorite. Here we go, we're just gonna load these up. You can see they are crisp, snap easily. So it is sort of like eating a little Lay's potato chip that has a bit of texture to it. If you have problems that you're trying to pull them off your sheets, okay, and whatever mesh you're using or if you decide to put this on fruit leather and they're not just coming off easily, don't just break them all apart. You can take your sheet and just kind of bend it, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna break that, um, it's gonna break where it's touching, where it's stuck, and then you won't have to worry about these breaking up. And it makes it a little easier in the end to collect them and throw them into your little storage bag. Now you'll see some of these I did a seasoning on both sides, some of my ones did it on one. That's totally up to you how you wanna do it. You can work it however you'd like. We're gonna combine these two because they don't need two separate ones. This is sour cream and the onion. This is taco seasoning. Um, I think with the taco seasoning, I might have added a little more salt. Maybe that is the difference in it. Um, and because my taco seasoning doesn't really have much salt in it. So here it is. These worked out really well. We like them all. Um, and I'm gonna put these together because we're good. That way it would be like a little mixed baggy surprise. But again, totally crispy. This is really like eating a Lay's potato chip without the salt and with a little more texture to it. So when you bite into it, it doesn't just kind of disintegrate. Okay, the last one. You can see a few more of these are missing. This was our favorite. We loved this pizza version. So it's basically, uh, we did both sides of it. It's good pizza flavor all over. You've got the crunch of the zucchini chip. These are by far our absolute favorite. So pizza, zucchini chips, but what I am going to tell you is if you store chips, no matter how you're storing it, and you find that they're not crispy anymore, throw them back in the dehydrator. It's fine. Another hour or two takes out whatever residual moisture that you collected, uh, makes them crisp again, and you can go ahead and enjoy them later. Alrighty, here are our shreds. Um, they are just basically shredded zucchini that you can break up a little bit to put them into your container. I'm going to make a bit of a mess as I do this, and all I have to do is roll my sheet and it will come apart really easily. I can break it up a little bit like that. Okay, there you go. Okay, this is just the beginning of what we're about to do for the season. So while I always tell you to, um, to store in a container that's the right size, this is about to get full. 
have even more zucchini as I start working through it. So I'm not concerned about that just yet. So like with everything, if you're going to store this, you want to condition in your jar for a week, five days, five days is enough for most things. Unless it's like fruit, then I kind of extend that a little bit. You just put it in your jar, let it shake it up once a day. What you're looking for is globs of this sticking together. That's not normal because you see some of this is still, still stuck together because I didn't break it all apart. But what you're wanting is to see if something starts doing a clump that uh, is not natural and that doesn't come apart. If you flip it over and you start seeing stuff stick to the top, a quick shake should take it off. If it doesn't, you might need more drying time. Okay, just put it back in the dehydrator, let it dry more. Static is gonna make stuff stick to the top or to the bottom if you flip it over. Uh, compaction, compression, um, is it's the weight of everything pushing down. Uh, the sugary things may stick to the top a second, and then as long as you can just gently shake it off, you're good. If you can't gently shake it off, it's time to go back in the dehydrator for a while. This will last you a long, long, long time, okay? Um, but like I said, if I was gonna store this, um, I would be storing it in a jar that was just about that size because you don't want all this extra air space. Um, but I'm gonna be filling this up and even into a larger half gallon jar, so that's our start. Uh, if you want to see other ways that you can use de uh, dehydrate zucchini, watch this video right here. I'm going to give you eight ways to dehydrate zucchini. So until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating.